Okay. Good morning, everyone. May I have your attention, please? We'd uh, thank you. We'd like to get started. Good morning. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Greater Naples. I am Janet Hoffman, the worship associate for this morning. And it is such a joy to have all of you here with us, whether you're here in the sanctuary, out on the pavilion, or watching us live on Facebook. And we are still just as grateful for those of you who need to find another time to watch the recorded service on YouTube or Facebook. If you are new to our congregation, we are grateful that you have found us. Our hope is that you will feel welcomed here and that we can find ways for you to connect with us. Our mission states that we are a welcoming congregation, freely seeking intellectual and spiritual growth. We strive to create a larger community of peace, justice, and love. And here we learn and grow together. We try to live our values out both inside and outside these walls. If you have found us for the first time, we hope that you will email our administrator at office at uunaples.org so we can include you in our email newsletters to know about activities and events at UUCGN. And many thanks to those who are helping with this service. In the back, we have Dan and John with technology. And here we have Sean, Abby, and the choir to bring us beautiful music. Our lay leader for the service today is Joan Benz, who is the co-chair of the Green Sanctuary Committee and has been an advocate for the earth since her childhood. Her medical career has been varied with private practice as well as basic and clinical research. She has delivered over 400 babies and was a, uh, was a physician for many multi-generational families. She has conducted many pharmaceutical clinical trials. She was also an associate professor at several medical schools and created a medical research center to study the effects of medications on very elderly patients. She has also actively volunteered at UUCGN in numerous ways. And so now, let's relax and settle ourselves into this time of worship with the prelude. Today we are doing a piece called Humble Song, which is written by, as you can see on the slide, the Odomin Kwe singers who are a, a group of Ojibwe women in uh, Canada. And um, we specially got permission to do this today. Um, and I wanted to let you know that this is a participatory uh, song, and so we will start it, and uh, then there will be slides and you can join in. It, we repeat the same uh, melody basically eight times. So it's more of a ceremony than a song. Thank you. Down low, we gotta humble ourselves in the eyes of our 
come and show us. We gotta know what he knows. We can raise each other up. Higher and higher we can raise each other up. We gotta humble ourselves in the eyes of our no comics. We gotta bend down low. We gotta humble ourselves in the eyes of our no she knows we can raise each other up higher and higher we can raise each other up we gotta humble ourselves in the eyes of our children we gotta bend down low we gotta humble ourselves in the eyes of our children we gotta know what they know we can raise each other Thank you. Committed to respond to the call of a wounded world. We join together this day with loving hearts, hands, and minds, embracing the interconnected web of water, air, and earth. We light a fire of sustaining hope, ever bright with love and justice. May we bring forth this day new wisdom, strength, and courage to create a new world, not of wealth, but of well-being. A world of new peace and abundance for all as we give thanks for this earth, our shared and singular home. May we dedicate ourselves to its ongoing care rising to the calls deep within us and all around us. May we respond today and always with courage and with love.
Please join us now so we can read the chalice lighting for the Web of Life by Paul Spreicher. We light this chalice for the Web of Life, which sustains us, for the sacred circle of life in which we have our being, for the earth and sky above and below, for the earth and for the mystery. Please rise now in body or spirit as we sing hymn number 79, No Number Tallies Nature. No number tallies nature of, no tribe its house can fill. It is a shining fount of life and pours a deluge still. And Earth by Lynn Cox. Spirit of life, ground of our being, root of unified mystery growing into myriad branches of expression. Bring us together now. Bring us close to the earth, ear to the whispering grass, quietly, attentively, waiting with slow breaths. 
listening for the very stones to cry out with their rocky stories of tectonic plates meeting and parting, meeting their mineral memories of Hayden days, molten rocks flowing and joining, their ancient legends of stars born out of collapse of other stars. Help us to remember, help us to piece together our oneness with matter, our oneness that matters. And with one more deep breath, may we rise, star stuff walking and rolling across the surface of an impossible blue-green planet. May we join together to heal what is divided. May we find wholeness within, among, between. Please now stay seated as we sing our centering hymn, number 301, Touch the Earth, Reach the Stars. Touch the earth, reach the sky, walk on shores while spirits fly, over the ocean, over the land, our faith a quest to understand. Touch the earth, reach the sky, children has the In our community, we take time each week to share our joys and our sorrows because the experience of every person matters. We are a welcoming community where we find connection, a spiritual community where we find meaning, a sharing community where our joys are amplified, and a caring community where our sorrows are lessened. This is a time to remember those in our lives who are struggling, are sick, have lost their lives, or are grieving. We also remember those out in the wider community who are also struggling, and those who serve on the front lines to help and serve others. We hold them in our hearts. We also remember those who are celebrating milestones, who have made an accomplishment, who have conquered a fear. And we also remember the, uh, what or who we are thankful for. Our hearts go out to Bridget Sparling, who lost her partner, Roy Bobbitt, Gobbitt, on April 18th and an obituary and details should come out soon. We are thinking of Michael Rux, who has been recovering from heart surgery and will probably return home tomorrow. We are very thankful that his recovery, recovering is going quite well. And now it is your turn. We'll focus first on the sorrows, and as I reach out my arm, to your area of the room, please speak out loud a name or names of someone you have a concern or sorrow for. Oh. 
भगवान थैंक यू ओके एंड नाउ विल डू द सेम फॉर जॉयस As I reach my arm out, speak out the name or names of those who you celebrate, or you can also name what you are thankful for. And thank you. Okay, now I will light this candle in honor of Bridget's partner Roy and also to remember those names who were not spoken out loud that we hold in our hearts silently Does swirl immensities of time and space, a universe infinite in all directions. How small our hopes and cares seem amid the panorama of the creation. Yet we are not separate from the cosmos, but have evolved and grown out of it, like the leaves of a tree, or the waves of the sea. And our thoughts are its thoughts. Our lives, a manifestation of never-ending vitality, our spirit, a microcosm of the beauty and creation of the whole. Fill us then with reverence and compassion for all who are our kin, cloud and sun, sibling and cousin, the multitude of beings who share this improbable and never to be repeated moment. all expressions like ourselves of the mind at large the spirit at play the dynamism at work in whom we live and move and whom we will never know as we sit in silence in this space let us consider this creativity of the whole that lives in our spirits Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Pulling weeds and picking stones, man is made of dreams and bones. Feel the need to grow my own, 'cause the time is close at hand. Grain for grain, sun and rain. find my way in nature's chain tune my body and my brain to the music from the land plant your rows straight and long temper them with prayer and song mother earth will make you strong if you give her love and care Old crow watching hungrily from his perch in yonder tree in my garden I'm as free as that feathered thief up there in 
inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below Till the rain comes tumbling down Till the rain comes tumbling down My work is Loving the World by Mary Oliver. My work is Loving the World here the sunflowers, there the hummingbirds, equal seekers of sweetness. Here the quickening yeast, there the blue plums. Here the clam deep in the speckled sand. Are my boots old? Is my coat torn? Am I no longer young and still not half perfect? Let me keep my mind on what matters which is my work, which is mostly standing still and learning to be astonished. The Phoebe, the Delphinium, the sheep in the pasture, the pasture, which is mostly rejoicing since all the ingredients are here, which is gratitude to be given a mind and a heart and these body clothes a mouth with which to give shouts of joy to the moth and the wren, to the sleepy dug-up clam, telling them over and over how it is that we live forever. Earth's endless treasures, gifts beyond measure, beauty beyond all imagining. Earth's endless treasures, source of all pleasure, gratefully now all thanks we bring. snow-capped mountains and the rolling seas brightly colored fields of flowers waving in the breeze pink and orange sunsets sands of towering trees drifting clouds in sun Drenched skies, crystal flowing streams, earth's endless treasures, gifts beyond measure, beauty beyond all imagining, earth's endless treasures, source of all pleasure, gratefully now. This is not our home. Uh, this is our home, but not just ours, sorry, by Laura Vogel. We gather here to remember that this is our home, but not just ours. This land we live on, this water we drink, this air we breathe, these old mountains that hold us steady to our ground, these forests that give, give us their healing green, these flowers that give us beauty and fragrance, these fields that give us our daily bread, these stars that show us our place, 
the wilderness, and our tame backyards, all of it our home. We remember the ancestors who have lived on this land and who have shaped it. The Calusa, the Seminoles, the explorers, the settlers, the farmers, the hunters, the immigrants, the scientists, the teachers, the workers, the leaders. We inherit their choices. We honor the animals and the creatures that have made their home on this land, the ones here now and the ones who used to be here. We envision the future generations who will live on this land and let their voices fill our hearts. We gather here to remember that this is our home, but not just ours. When I was a child, one of the nursery rhymes I learned then was, Ladybug, ladybug, fly away. Your house is on fire and your children are in it. Thank you for joining this celebration of Earth Day where we honor the beauty, majesty, and wonder of the earth. And we recognize your house is on fire and your children are in it. Senator Gaylord Nelson was primarily responsible for the creation of the first day, Earth Day in the spring of 1970. It was created to demonstrate support for environmental protection. It is gratifying to know that the very first Earth Day remains the largest single day protest in human history. More than 20 million people across the world poured out into the streets. Earth Day has been celebrated annually on or about April 22nd, and by 1990, just 20 years later, events were being held in 143 countries. The Paris Climate Agreement in 2016 was signed symbolically on Earth Day. It now includes a wide range of events coordinated globally by EarthDay.org. It is estimated that 100 million people participate now in more than 193 countries. Yet, sadly, even that amount of support has not been enough to overcome the power of those who don't care that their actions are ravaging the planet. Earth Day participants work locally and globally to reforest the earth, end plastic pollution, preserve biodiversity, adopt plant-based diets, and spread climate literacy. This Earth Day's 2022's theme is Invest in Our Planet. It fe features six primary programs, sustainable fashion, the Canopy Project, Food and Environment, the Global Earth Challenge, the Great Cl Global Cleanup, and Climate and Environmental Advocacy and Literacy. Here at UUCGN, our gr Green Sanctuary Group has been studying and discussing each of these facets of sustainable living, and we all would like to invite you to join us. We feel that the more we learn, the more we can do, either as individuals or collectively, to support sustainable goals. That's the essence, to live on Earth in a sustainable way. I'd also like to invite you, when you go home today, to Google the website Earth Day, that's one word, dot org, to read about Earth Day 2022. There's so much information that you'll quickly find on the website that you may find it useful if you are given an opportunity to share it with others in pleasant but meaningful conversations. 
For example, sustainable fashion is considered an achievable and necessary priority this year because, believe it or not, the fashion industry is responsible for 8% of total greenhouse gas emissions. The Canopy Project is critical because the world's forests are the second biggest storehouse of carbon. The first are all the oceans. And therefore, the forest absorbs significant amount of greenhouse gases, as well as being the magnificent home to 80% of the world's biodiversity. The forests also protect waterways, enhance soil nutrition, and provide buffers from natural disasters. They are an integral part of the interdependent web, which he, we here at UUCGN holds so dearly to our hearts. You'll find that the website earthday.org emphasizes that, quote, Earth Day is not a day, it's a movement. The website is a repository of information to provide a source for climate and environmental literacy. Obviously, each of us could be a little more mindful of our personal impact on the Earth. If all of us tried just a little harder, the small daily things we can do can collectively have a greater impact. For example, if you can do it, composting food waste is inexpensive, it's easy, and it's fun. It creates healthy soil, and it's a win-win in, in every way. Limiting or eliminating completely insecticides, herbicides, and other toxic chemicals are both cost-saving and earth-saving. Keeping your thermostat at 76 to 77 degrees here in the south or in the summers in the north and at 68 degrees in the north in the winter can be cost-savings to those families that do it as well as collectively decreasing our reliance on fossil fuels. We all know many of things we can do, but as we choose to be more mindful of each of them, we're more likely to mention our choices of actions to friends and neighbors in non-confrontational way. And that may be the biggest gift that we can give the earth in terms of impact. That is, Climate and environmental literacy are highlighted this year because there is so much deliberate and deceitful misinformation abounding regarding earth change, climate change, that only 100 million people globally support Earth Day out of a world population of 7.9 billion. That's only one out of 79 of the world's population after working at it for 52 years. So there's a lot of conversation and education that needs to be done now. For example, there's very little attention and very few resources given to the deleterious impacts of the 85,000 man-made chemicals that we now have on the earth. It behooves all of us to know how to respectively correct the current mis perceptions that exist, as well as how to dispel the deliberate fallacies. The first fallacy or myth is that we do not have the technology or the resources now to mitigate the problem in order to achieve the Paris Accord of less than two degrees centigrade additional increase in temperature by the year 2100. That's just 78 years from now. But there is a lot of proof that we actually do have the means right now to do that. Another myth is that we could just emigrate to another suitable planet. <laughs> it's just not reasonable to think that we can move millions or billions of people with our relatively short lifespans and the vast distances that would need to be traveled and have the energy required to do that. Another myth is that we can wait for some great technological development. It's not a good plan to just cross our fingers and make a wish. It's not a good plan at all. A 
A fourth myth is that it's too controversial to address the explosive growth of the human population, which is now 10 times greater than it was at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in 1760. That was just 262 years ago. So to reiterate that, there's been a tenfold increase in the population in just 262 years. The Earth's resources cannot support this unfettered, explosive population growth. It just can't. For example, if everyone alive today consumed as much as we do on average in the United States, this is a good thing to mention to all the climate deniers, we already would require 5.4 Earths to support that kind of consumption. The concepts of continual GDP growth and continued population growth must be discussed, must be challenged, and must be changed. A fifth myth is that environmental advocates are just alarmists. The data are too numerous and too strong to believe that. The topic itself, not the people who are trying to, to get us to address it, is alarming. Your house is on fire, and your children are in it. The sixth myth is it's too expensive and too disruptive to address the climate crisis now, and then it's corollary. Who's going to pay for it anyway? That one's really easy. Everyone's going to pay for it now. Rich, poor, young, old, with their finances and their health. And if we wait, everyone will pay much, much, much more later. Scientists and economists around the world working together in peer-reviewed fashion have been modeling and refining those models based upon thousands of data points over time. There are different models and therefore different financial totals based upon best and worst case scenarios and everything in between. But if you subtract the cost to achieve the Parent Climate Accord goals from the costs that will be sustained if they are not achieved in the timeline set, that is in just 78 years. We could save over that time, please remember this range to tell your friends. We could save if we act now, somewhere between worst and best case scenarios, $127 trillion and $616 trillion dollars over that 78 years. That is, it will be costly. It will be. But the, if the world invests $54 trillion over the next 78 years to lower the increase that is going to occur in temperature to only 1.5 degrees centigrade, more than what has already happened, 1 degree centigrade, since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution that started our heavy dependence on fossil fuels, there will be about a tenfold savings compared to the cost of destruction that will occur if the temperature continues to rise unabated to the 3.7 degrees centigrade that will happen if we continue to maintain the status quo. That's it. That's the bottom line to tell everyone you know the world spends $54 trillion soon or up to $616 trillion if we continue to procrastinate. That will be the financial cost of increased intensified storms, flooding, droughts, fire, freezing, food supply loss of fish, plants, and animals, extinction of species, rising tides with the damage to the ocean city and coastal cities where most people live, and to the infrastructure everywhere. Lost labor productivity, mass migration, and what I find most terrifying is um, how not 
is how if we do not mitigate it now, it will trigger and worsen self-perpetuating feedback loops that we won't be able to control. What I mean by that is, for example, as the permafrost melts from the atmospheric warming, the vast amount of carbon it has stored is released and it combines with oxygen to form CO2. That additional CO2 traps more of the heat from the ultraviolet rays of the sun, causing more release of the stored carbon in a horrific self-perpetuating cycle. This is already happening in Siberia to the methane and the carbon stores in the huge bogs in Siberia. What can we do right now? We can stop the subsidies to gas, oil, and coal industries in the form of tax abatements. We can stop the subsidies to harmful farming practices. We can tax carbon pollution at its sources. We can create supportive renewable energy legislation. You can invest your own finances in renewable energy stocks and ETFs. You can teach the other 78 out of 79 people globally about why we must all pay now, because we'll pay far, far more in the near future, 78 years, one lifetime, if we don't. As Gaylord Nelson himself said, the ultimate test of man's conscious conscience might be his willingness to sacrifice something today for future generations whose words of thanks will not be heard. Thank you all for supporting the Earth Day movement. So as we said, we all can do a little bit. Janet, can you tell us about the little bit that the RE kids have done to help mitigate climate change? Sure, I'd love to. The RE kids have planted 31 native butterfly plants in our UUCGN garden. They planted nectar plants for the adult butterflies to eat and host plants to provide food for the caterpillars. These plants will also provide food for bees and birds. How does that help mitigate climate change? We are losing our pollinators. Bees and butterflies are needed to pollinate plants, so they'll produce seeds and reproduce. Populations of bees and butterflies are seriously declining. Why are bees and butterfly populations declining? Because of pesticide use, loss of habitat, loss of biodiversity, and hotter temperatures. They pose a threat to our own well-being because at least one-third of our diet comes from pollinated plants. Why were native plants used? Well, native plants are beneficial in several ways. They do not need the pesticide and fertilizer like cul cultivated and exotic species need. So they keep our environment cleaner, especially our water. They have a stronger root system that does not require regular watering once the plant is established. So they help save our water. They also store more carbon dioxide. They are a better source of food for birds, bees, butterflies, and other wildlife. And just an example, our native oak trees can support more than 550 species of caterpillars. Non-native trees support far fewer, some as few as five species. A clutch of chickadee, chickadee chicks can eat over 9,000 caterpillars from the time they hatch un until they fledge, which is about 16 days. Native nesting birds are dependent on a robust insect population to feed their young. Insect diversity and abundance is much higher with native species of plants and trees. Bird populations are seriously dwindling. We have lost almost three billion, not million, three billion birds 
since the 1970s. Native plants also produce their fruits and nuts that follow often the same timeline and schedule as migrating birds. So native plants are a key tool to increasing the bird population. Thank you for sharing how important native plants are for our restoring populations of birds, bees, and butterflies. My pleasure. So now it is, it is our time, energy, imagination, creativity, compassion, and the financial support of members and friends of this congregation that fuel our mission to nurture and sustain a welcoming and inclusive religious community. Your generous contributions support our mission to grow intellectually and spiritually. It enables us uh, to build a greater world of peace, justice, and love. A contribution can be mailed to the address on the screen or also using our website at uunaples.org. We are truly grateful for the gifts that are received.
Let me take a moment to fill you in on any major announcements about upcoming events here. Everything you need to know about all of our ongoing activities here at UUCGN can be found in our Sunday news, the weekly uh, news email, or by going online to our website at uunaples.org. Just a reminder that the art gallery in Menneker Hall, or lobby, is now displaying the work of G.T. Burke, and an artist's reception will be held in that lobby on April 27th at 6.30 p.m. Beginning on Wednesday, May 4th, from 6.30 to 8, a series of creative videos will be shown to facilitate a discussion regarding um, parts of the book, The Black Tax, by Sean Rochester. There will be five sessions in total, all via Zoom, each on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. And so this will continue until June the 1st. Mary Porcino will coordinate the discussions. Um, please email office at uunaples.org to register. And there are some free books available for those who wish to get one. Uh, this uh, first Friday will be May the 6th. We'll be here at our pavilion. It starts at 5 p.m. Everyone is invited. The theme is Mexican. So if you can bring a Mexican appetizer, uh, that's fantastic, but you don't have to. Um, so anyway, hope that you can all come on May the 6th. And just a reminder that we encourage all of you to join us immediately after the service, when the service is done, out on the pavilion for fellowship and refreshments. Please stand in body or spirit as we sing our closing song, Sunshine on the Land, which is not in the hymnal. I'll be singing the verses and asking you all to join me for the chorus, which we're, Abby and I are going to do right now, and the words for the chorus are on the screen, just so you can hear what that sounds like. I am the sunshine, and you are the sunshine, we are the sunshine. Help me understand We are the sunshine on the land I went to see an old friend Who was soon to pass away He said my life has been so good to me how I still have one more day and Now he said that as he watched the morning sun And then he smiled my way Because he said that every morning He'd lived his life that way He said, I am the sunshine You are the sunshine we are the sunshine, help me understand, we are the sunshine on the land. He said this day is like a life you live, it's never here to stay. Because your time is always running by like the sun across the day but it's like looking at the sunshine from the earth the light does come and go but when you're looking at the earth shine from the sun it's quite a different show you said it's time you know that i am the sunshine you are the sunshine we are the sunshine, help me.
we understand we are the sunshine on the land now I'm thinking of the things he said we're walking toward the grave and I haven't lived a life like his but I still got one more day now you could say that it's only flesh and bone the life that's in your hands but I like to think it's something more like the sunshine on the land I am the sunshine you are the sunshine we are the sunshine help me understand we are the sunshine on the land we are the sunshine on the refuse to bequeath a dying planet to future generations by failing to act now. We act in peace with ferocious love for these lands in our hearts. We act on behalf of life. <laughs> 